Western Australia's Wharton Beach is often described as a magical place, but its treasure is more than dazzling white sand and sapphire coloured water. Beneath that brilliant exterior is a portal to a forgotten world. Scientists and traditional owners are now working to learn its secrets. Well, I've got roughly about a metre right, um, diameter around, so it's a pretty big stamp. I'm trying to preserve as much of the tree stump as I can while I'm digging out. Don't want to um, destroy it. <laughs> The Esperance Dayurak Native Title Aboriginal Corporation has been closely monitoring this beach ever since a surprise discovery in 2021. An extreme tide had revealed an unusual log which Ranger Jeremy Smith found and had sent away to be radiocarbon dated. Came back uh, 7,000 plus years of age, so it was a pretty cool find. Pretty mind blowing to see. It's just because how well preserved the tree stumps were. Um, so this is the first one that we sort of collected from along this beach um, about two years ago now. So that's the little hole where we just drilled to get the samples from. So as you can see, we only need a little bit of a little sample. Not only was the stump around 7,000 years old, but the dunes at the bottom of the peat bog were even older, formed around 12,600 years ago. It was extremely exciting news. Archaeologist David Gilfoyle specialises in landscapes and communities. This is a peat bog that you know, came to be about 12,000 years ago and then disappeared again. It got covered over by sands and, and now you know, the ocean. So you know, it's a little time capsule that we're um, uncovered. And it's just really the, the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we need to explore and, and study. Dr Ingrid Ward from the University of Western Australia's School of Biological Sciences was so excited by the news, she raced straight out to see it. I jumped on a plane within two days, um, yeah, and got to race out to the site and it was, yeah, really, really very, very exciting for me. As the peat had been sealed over by sand and sea for so long, they hoped it might still contain organic material from thousands of years ago. Australia's very dry and very arid, so it's, it's, it's very rare to find organics being preserved in Australia. Um, so the significance of these peats is the possibility of what they might contain. The fact that they preserve an organic record um, so within them I instantly knew we would get records of pollen of the trees uh, and the vegetation that used to exist. The tree stumps themselves are a representative of, of, of an ancient forest that connects to when uh, sea levels were much lower. It's kind of like a gateway into a lost landscape the, of the past. But following another tide, that gateway to the past was then sealed over again. That was until early June, when the Dalyrak Rangers made their latest discovery. The sample went to Associate Professor Tim Barrows at the University of New South Wales Kronos Radiocarbon Facility. Radiocarbon is produced in the atmosphere and it's incorporated into all living things. And so when those things die or are preserved in the environment, um, the radiocarbon starts to de decay away. So by measuring how much radiocarbon is left in the sample, we can determine um, how old it is. Dating the stump is not just about discovering the past, but the hope that it will provide vital information about the impact of climate change. Understanding the past is, is very important because it gives us a natural baseline to understand how uh, the, just climate changes naturally through time. We're in an interglacial now, so uh, the climate has warmed up um, after the last ice age. So understanding those natural ways of the climate change climate changes gives us uh, an insight into um, how, how it could be changing at the moment and what proportion of it is, um, is caused by uh, the CO2 that we're putting into the atmosphere. 
Wujari Noongar elder Doc Reynolds believes the work could reveal how humans had previously adapted to a changing climate. Further along the beach, we've seen in the embedded, encrusted into the mud, ancient or uh, well, artefacts that our people used. So we know our people lived around here. What we're actually hoping to learn from this here is how our, how our ancestors, as the sea levels rose, were able to retreat. The Wajari people have lived here for tens of thousands of years and they've faced a lot of these climate upheavals and adapted and, um, you know, switched strategies and moved and, um, you know, adapted their technologies to, to be able to um, sort of cope to the, new, to the new ecosystems that they're always facing. So when we're looking about planning for climate change now with all the threats and pressures we see on the coastal environment, we've got a lot to learn from the past. They believe understanding the area's past will also strengthen cultural um, connections with the country. Yeah. For Auntie yeah. Donna Beach, the discovery helps connect the past to the present. To bring it to life, to know, you know how, how it lived back then and, yeah, the, um, just a connection. Hopefully, Soon, in the near future, we'll get some DNA records. Then that may provide some insight into how people interacted with that landscape um, and the kind of plants and the resources that were available to them. She believes it's critical the area is protected. It's a priority for the rangers too, who have planted trees on nearby sand dunes to prevent them collapsing onto the ancient peat bog. So today we're out here just um, doing some revenge of the dunes that are surrounding the area through working with some of the scientists in Perth. They believe that there's still a lot of stuff underneath the dunes that hasn't been uncovered yet. So, yeah, we just want to you know, keep it stabilised and keep that all, you know, preserved as it is at the moment. It's been two months since the rangers first dug the stump out of Wharton Beach. Today, they're finally going to learn how old it is. Hi, I thought I'd um, give you a quick call today to let you know uh, the results of the samples that you sent in. We divided the peat up into um, two samples and um, they were 6,870 years and um, 7,060 years. And the tree trunk is just a little bit older than that, it's 7,120 years. So that's when sea level um, reached its current level today. That's fantastic, Tim. And, um, you know, like I, when you look at it, that's pretty consistent with a lot of the other carbon dating that we've been having along our coastline. I found that very exciting. Um, <clears throat> just to see how old that is is very amazing and I can't believe it's right there underneath our feet. Associate Professor Tim Barrows says the trees wouldn't have grown in salt water, meaning that 7,000 years ago, Wharton Beach wasn't a beach at all, but a freshwater swamp. Rising seas would have brought the salt water to the region, which probably killed the trees. The salt water would have, um, would have knocked that bit of um, land pretty hard, and that's what would have um, stopped the peat forming and, and killed the trees. It's left the rangers even more excited to find out what other stories the region holds. Definitely a lot more to discover. Um, I think we're just starting to, at the beginning of it, like I said, didn't really realise what we came across when we came across that first stump um, a few years ago. And now we've actually got our eyes open while we're out on patrols or when we're in the certain areas. So we know what to look for now. So um, yeah, hopefully we see more and get some really good results. And...